So let's take a look at an Intel Nook. This is the Intel Nook 12 Pro, the i7 variant. I originally got a mini computer from Asus. I was hoping this one would be my new little mini PC, but unfortunately, I just feel like it is too loud and it is thermal throttling like hell. It's also the top of the line I bought here with the Ryzen 9 8 core CPU. Unless I disable precision boost overdrive and limit the CPU to like 35 wattage, it's just so loud and so annoying and the fan have a high pitch noise to it. So yeah, really like the little machine, except for the, of course, cooling solution. And that brings me to this one here, of course, the Intel Nook 12 Pro Mini. Pretty much exactly the same footprint, a little bit smaller actually, but of course with an Intel CPU and also built by Intel themselves. Hopefully it will be more quiet because it does have those efficiency cores. So eight efficiency cores and four performance cores. And when you're just browsing the web, responding to emails, watching some YouTube, maybe doing some photo editing, it will probably be in those or use those efficiency cores most of the time. And also you get a little bit better graphics card in here, or at least a more modern graphics card with better decoders and encoders as well, if you want to do some light video editing, but also just for watching YouTube videos. Hopefully it will be a little bit better here. First off, let's just remove this plastic bag. One thing I don't like with this system here right out of the bat is the lack of a USB Type-C on the front. We have two USB Type-A. Both of them are 10 gigabits per second, so that's kind of impressive. And one of them can also supply, I believe, up to 35 watt of fast charging. But compared to the Asus system here, even though these are only 5 gigabits per second, we also have a USB Type-C that is just so useful to have on the front connector. Don't really use them that much, but still, it's nice to have. And of course, headphone jack, power button on the front there. Intel Nock branding around the box. And of course, we have the Intel Iris XE graphics. So it's a pretty cut down version of the XE graphics. But again, for a system like this, I think it will be pretty okay. I'm not going to game or anything on a system like this. I'm just going to connect it up to two monitors, run it at 120 hertz or maybe 144 hertz, either at 1440p monitors or maybe a 4K monitor as well, and just do some web browsing, emailing, and photo editing. But anyways, this one is the i7 version. I believe that you only get a little bit beefier graphics and a little bit faster on the clock speeds as well. Of course, a little bit better bind if you compare it to like the i5. And this one runs in DDR4. And this is one of the reasons why I actually did not look on Intel system to begin with, because a lot of them actually runs on DDR5. And since I already have DDR4 on hand, I have a 32 gigabyte kit that I have, of course, right now in my Asus build here. It would just be the cheapest solution for me to just use those memory. And I do also have storage, but actually I did go out and buy a new storage for this one here specifically because it can run PCI Express Gen 4 and this one was on sale and right now I have used my other SSDs in this little system here. I don't really want to take those out just yet. You can have up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory and you can also have two SSD storage but one of them is PCI Express Gen 4 NVMe up to an 80 millimeter in length. The other one is a SATA and only up to 42 millimeters in length though. So those are not as common, but potentially you can also use this plug for something else. Just use it as standard M.2 form factor or plug. This one, because this is the tall version, can also handle a 2.5 inch SATA drive. Intel have not really specified what kind of height you can actually mount there. I'm hoping we can get up to 12 millimeters of a 2.5 inch drive because that means I can throw in some of my five terabyte spinning drives in there. But of course you can also just use it for SSD. For me personally, I'm just gonna throw in a standard hard drive in there at the moment, but probably upgrade to an SSD in the future if, it's this, if that's something I'm going to use regularly. And of course, operating system, definitely run this with Windows 11. It's more optimized for the little big core setup that Intel is using nowadays with the 12th gen. CPU and on the bottom side there we do have all of the serial numbers on this little label here but of course I'll just cover that don't want to share that with the world but anyways let's get into it cut through the seal it's brand new I just picked it up today actually a few hours ago and this is the one without a power cable inside I believe you can also get a model with a power cable not a power brick, but just a power cable. But that actually costs like $40 more or something for, for a power cable. And yeah, I have plenty of those lying around. So definitely not something I will pay extra for. But right out the bat there, we do have the little system. And man, feels very dense, very nice. And actually, yeah, right out the bat, seems a little bit smaller than the Asus system. When I opened up the Asus system, I was very impressed by the small footprint. But actually compared to the Intel, it seems a little bit 
bigger, not big, but just a little bit bigger. Let's just throw the system for this to the side by now and uh, have a close look at what else we get in the box. So we get a little bit of guide here, so we can scan a QR code and download something, I suppose. So the collateral guide for the model number, okay. And some more unusable information, great. And safety information as well, fantastic. I guess you have to go online if you want to have instructions. So these are not really all that useful, just a little bit of paper waste underneath this. Don't have anything really, let's just remove that and dig a little deeper. So you also get a decent amount with this one, same as with the Asus one. I believe this one is a little more simple actually, there's not something that's holding the screws in place. But yeah, definitely nice that it included this and also a little mold sticker if you want to connect that to your, to the front side of the case or whatever. Kind of nice to throw it inside the case or inside the box and not already applied that. I guess they will save a little bit of money, not hiring people to put those stickers on. But anyways, nice visa mount. And yeah, this one seems to not have a power cable. Let's just remove everything and see what we get. Of course, we get the power adapter and also some screws for mounting stuff. Let's get the box out of the way. Have a look at the power adapter first. Of course, the power adapter is also kind of big and external, and that's one of the reasons why they can make the little nut so small. So if you account for both of these, it is, of course, relatively bigger. If it should be installed inside of the system, but I kind of like having an external power supply because that doesn't add any extra heat into the system and it's also much easier to replace. And this is, of course, a high quality one from Ciccioni, however you want to pronounce that, but these are make very good power supplies. And this is a 120 watt, which is definitely a lot and should be plenty, no matter what you connect to this little system. And you need to use that Mickey Mouse style plug in there, so just be aware of that. And of course, just plug in the cable that is not included with this one, but of course you can pay a substantial amount extra if you want that cable that only costs like $5 else. And then of course we have some screws. I believe some of them are properly for the M.2 and one is for attaching the wire so you can kind of keep the power connected or the power plug properly connected at all times. Kind of a nice little thing so you don't accidentally lose power if you move the little computer around. Then we get a little box of screws. I guess the little bit weird screws here is for the visa mounting. So you kind of use this screw here, screw in the bottom of the knock, and then just let it hang from those screws in here in the visa mounting. So kind of a nice, easy little solution there. But there's no way to lock it in place, like on the Asus one. So they're not the greatest. And I think the black ones actually are for a hard drive. I'm not really sure what the bigger ones are for. Maybe we'll find out of this video. So that's definitely enough screws to get you up and running. And let's just have a look at the main competitor here of the main device, the star of the show. Remove the back and take a closer look at this little nook. Definitely feels very rugged, nicely built. Of course, it is all plastic, but yeah, actually feels better. Maybe, ah, I wouldn't see it feels better than the Asus one, but Maybe a little more rugged, but yeah, man, a USB Type-C here would just have been perfect. I really like having two USB-A's, but man, that extra USB-C compared to like the Asus here, that would just have been a perfect port layout. On the side here, we do have some kind of dust filtration, so you probably need to take this apart from time to time and just clean it out from dust, because I believe the fan is on all the time. Backside here is where it gets a little impressive, actually. We get two Thunderbolt ports, or this is actually USB 4, but 4 T gigabits per second USB port is kind of the equivalent of having a PCI Express slot externally. So you can connect very fast SSDs or you can connect a docking station and of course get fast ethernet and multiple other devices like display port also get out of these plugs here. You can connect an external GPU if you want to boost up the graphical performance, but of course that just doesn't make much sense getting a small device like this. You can just get a bigger, bigger computer and throw in a GPU in there, but anyways, you could do so. We do have two HDMIs, but I believe those can only handle up to 60 frames per second at 4K. They are advertised as 2.1 HDMI plugs on Intel's website, but HDMI 2.1 doesn't really mean that much really. Would have been nice to see them handling up to 120 hertz at 4k i do prefer the plug selection of the asus computer because it does have a full-size display port as well as two hdmi plugs as well and you can also of course a usb-c to display port adapter on the asus and get 
two display ports out on that system. And you can do the same with this one, but you can just use an adapter like this, USB Type-C to display port. Then you just lose out on one of those Thunderbolt ports in terms of data transfer. So the best solution would probably be to uh, get a docking station where you can also get display port out or HDMI out, maybe even a second LAN connection and so on and so on. I don't really see the reason for getting this because this is so small, so you can just be right near your display. Or that's what I plan to do. Keep it right below the display in front of me so I can have quick access to those USB plugs on the front. So if you had to connect a, connect a dock to take full advantage of the system, you kind of have a device that is as big or maybe even bigger than this and a second power supply as well and so on and so on. I'm not really sure that's the best solution. Having that full-size display port is definitely something I'm going to miss or even just a mini display. I would have taken that any day. But anyways, enough rambling about display connection. We do have that expansion port here. I've not seen any example of stuff you can connect to this one, but I believe there is some USB 2.0 headers inside the computer, so you could potentially hook up a few USB ports. Kind of nice, they have some kind of expansion. I like that aspect of, the, of it, but if nobody have ever made anything for this device, I'm not really sure how usable it actually is. There's power plug there and the little screw hole is actually for the included screw. I'm not really sure I'm going to use this, but let's just try and actually connect it. Kind of like the idea that you can cable manage or tie the cable in. Not really sure which orientation it would want me to do so. Probably like so, yeah. And one thing I just noticed actually that this power plug is a straight plug, so it doesn't have a 90 degree angle like it does on this Asus one. So actually a little easier to accidentally unplug. I kind of like that they have this little screw. I'll probably keep this on actually. On the left side, we do have more ventilation, of course, with a little bit of dust filtration and a Kensington lock here as well. On the lid, you can actually remove the lid and I believe you can actually get a quick wireless charger for this. So you can just drop your phone or whatever on top of here and charge that. And then we had the bottom side here. We do have four rubber feet, which also is the screws. Pretty much the same design as on the Asus one. So kind of unscrew the feet if you want to get inside and mess around. And you have a arrow there that's showing where the front is. Kind of nice little detail because it looks pretty identical either way. So you know which way you actually have to plug it in. And the little rubber gasket you can see there, right by my ring finger, is actually where you screw in the hard drive underneath. So there is, is four screw holes underneath here. If you want to connect a 2.5 inch hard drive, definitely very easy to get into this system. And let's just do that right now. So of course, just use a Phillips head screwdriver, unscrew all the little feet. I believe they are also captive, so they will not come out completely. Let's make sure they are screwed out enough so you can actually open it up like so and actually spring loaded as well. And there is also a ribbon cable in this one because it does have the SATA drive. And let's just get a little bit closer here actually, but inside the system you can see everything is nicely labeled. So you know what kind of memory you need to use. DDR4, 1.12 2 volt. You know which of the M.2 is NVMe only. You can see there it says NVMe only. The other one says Peaky SATA. That is of course for the 42 millimeter SATA SD if you want to connect that. And we also have the Wi-Fi module. Just put a little sticker on there so you cannot see my MAC address and so on. But this is the AX211. And to begin with, I'm just going to use some slower memory because my 3200 kit is in my Asus computer as of the, this video. I'm not really sure which one I'm going to keep as of yet. And let's just get the anti-static gloves on just to be sure. Remove the Wi-Fi cable so we can just get rid of the other half here. And of course, be a little bit careful because there's already some thermal tape here underneath the the bottom section. Looking at this, I actually think we can have a 12 millimeter drive in here. Yeah, I think actually we can have up to a five terabyte hard drive. That is good news, I think. So we'll try and attach one in this video as well. And one little pro tip in abstracts, if you're dealing with these thermal pads here, just put some tape on, the, on top of them so you don't actually dently uh, like destroy them or, or ruin them when you're actually dealing with the bottom cover here. Also dust and debris and all kind of stuff will just accumulate there. And of course, just remove the tape slowly and if it debris and uh, dust and everything that's on these little thermal pads will just be removed and then just plug it in place, of course. Next step, just to plug in the NVMe SSD. Of course, we have a brand new one here. Going in this system, just one terabyte. I think it's fine for my use case. So the Kingston KC3000, uh, one of the faster NVMe SSDs out there right now. And like I said, it was on sale, so I couldn't really resist getting a brand new, but I'm not really sure PCI Express Gen 4 NVMe SSD is best in a small form factor like this. Definitely 
do need the added cooling that is also supplied here. You can see it actually have a little bit beefier cooling on the tall version compared to the non-tall version, this little copper brick that they have attached to the bottom section. Definitely a nice added thing, because else it will just get so hot. PCI Express Gen 4 drives are still a very hot experience. Still, it's not quite worth it unless you're really transferring a lot of big files to and from your drive, which is not something I'm going to do in this one here. But anyways, let's just get it installed to the NVMe only slot, like so. Use the little screw and nicely plugged in place. The 3200 megahertz memory kit that I want to use is actually in the other system from Asus right now. So I'm still just debating which one I'm going to keep. So right now I'm just going to use these two 2666 megahertz kit. But definitely if you are using this device here, get the fastest memory you can get. So 3200 megahertz because that eGPU really relies on the faster memory, the better. But very easy to just plug in and actually very, very easy to work on this little machine here. I'm kind of surprised. I feel like it is a little bit better than the Asus one. Just a little bit unfortunate that you cannot have two NVMe SSDs in there. But I can see, of course, the uh, Ethernet plug is actually getting a little bit in the way here. Maybe they could have done like Asus is doing, where they actually have the second NVMe SSD on the bottom section. So they have a little mountain bracket and a thicker wire than this that also can transfer NVMe speeds, at least time two speeds. But anyways, just throw a big HDD in here and of course you can get a small SATA drive, but these are just so rare and hard to get and you probably have to actually pay more for one of these compared to like an 80 millimeter drive. Another solution of course is to use something like this. This is still SATA, but just a SATA drive or drive caddy that is converted into a M.2 SATA drive. So you can see you can use full length 80 millimeter here as well, as well as of course those shorter ones but just plug this one in, of course, in the lower section of the case, and you can this way still use 80 millimeter SSDs, but of course only on the SATA protocol. So you lose, lose out a little bit in terms of speed, but yeah, definitely also a solution. But anyways, let me just get that five terabyte drive and see if we can actually get it in here. So this is a Seagate five terabyte SATA hard drive, of course, 12 millimeter in height, five terabyte, definitely should be more than enough storage for me. I'm not really sure I'm even gonna use it, but I kind of like having it in there just in case I need to back something up or whatever I wanna use it for. Of course, you don't have any kind of redundancy, so don't really keep any important data on the drive here, but let's just see if we can actually get this one in since they have not really specified what kind of size drive you have in there. And uh, I believe I have to remove those rubber thingies from the bottom, they kind of stick out a little bit here. So we kind of need to remove those first. Wow, nice, <laughs> fits just fine. Okay, that's excellent news actually. So it just bumped up a degree. In my book here, you can throw a five terabyte drive in here. That's excellent. And of course, screw it in place. These screws here, I believe, are for the hard drive. See, and yes, work just fine. One of them is kind of stuck to this back here, so let's remove that. Third screw, the last one here, the fourth screw. And I just noticed something actually assembling this computer that the bottom plate is made of metal. The whole plate here, the Asus one, we do have plastic underneath. Not really a big deal, but considering you have those mounting points where you will mount it on the visa mount on back on your monitor or on a wall or whatever, I would definitely like to have pure metal, so yeah, definitely another thumbs up there because of those screws that will actually have to carry some weight. So the hard drives installed, nice. You can have full size 2.5 inch hard drive, so you can have seven millimeters, nine millimeters and 12 millimeters as well. And then all you do, of course, is plug everything back into place here. You can see the front arrow, of course, towards the front like so. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna set it up and see if everything is properly seated and connected before I will actually seal this up. And of course, I'll throw the 3200 megahertz kit in. But anyways, if you, of course, wanna finish this build, just plug it in like so, screw it back into place, and you're pretty much good to go. So that's unboxing and assembly of the Intel 12th generation NUC. Next step, of course, is to install Windows and install all of the applications, some benchmark application and run a few benchmarks. And let me just get everything up and running, run a few tests and see if everything is running stable. And then I will throw in the 3200 megahertz kit 
32 gigabytes of memory kit that I have and we'll run some benchmark and see where we actually stand with a small device like this. So I've installed Windows and tested it, the system out and everything is working. But installing Windows, I actually had to plug in a USB LAN card. I installed Windows 11, which was the latest version that I got when using the Windows Disk Creator or the tool you can download from a Microsoft website. So that was a little weird. So I didn't find either the LAN or the wireless card to begin with. So I had to go into Intel's website and actually download the latest driver there or download the driver tool. Not a big deal, but you probably need a little USB LAN adapter or include the drivers within the Windows install to actually get this up and running because you need access to the internet to be able to, able to actually install Windows 11 nowadays. But anyways, time to actually throw in the 3200 megahertz memory kit. Get rid of these slower ones here. So these are the Fury Impact from Kingston. And this is actually, what is it, the fourth system that this is installed in. I know this memory works, so I've tested them out, of course, ran mem test and so on. So I know that these memory modules definitely do work and now we are running all Kingston built here with Kingston memory and Kingston NVMe SSD. And let's just install the plug here. Again, I believe it was this orientation. So the black end of the plug for the SATA drive out towards the front, the white end or the blue end towards the back of the system. And make sure that it's properly seated in there like so. Nice and easy. Then of course remove the tape that we have applied to the thermal compound for the SSD. Make sure it is in the right orientation. So of course the arrow there pointing towards the front. So the front is this way right now. Plug everything in and it should be good to go. Doesn't seem to want to go all the way in. You can see in this corner. What am I missing here? And like so, took a little longer actually because the cable was kind of getting a little bit in the way for the hard drive. So it was kind of angled upwards, so you couldn't really push the bottom section down. So you kind of have to twist the cable a little bit and squeeze it a little bit in place without actually twisting too much. So we'll actually know when we have assembled this, if you can see the hard drive inside of Windows, of course. And I always like to, if I can, cross tighten everything. So I kind of thought maybe the 12 millimeter hard drive was too tall because I just couldn't get it in place. But yeah, turns out that it was just a cable. Not the best cable design in my opinion, but you just need to squeeze a little bit. So now everything should be nice and tidy. 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory, one terabyte NVMe, PCI Express Gen 4 SSD, and a five terabyte hard drive in this little package here. Definitely very nice. I like that a lot. That's kind of impressive having all this storage speed and it's not really all that loud. I did, like I said, set up Windows 11. So far, definitely much quieter than my Asus system. That's a nice starting point at least. But anyways, let's just get into some benchmarking and see how well this little machine actually fares. So that's pretty much all I have for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, take care.